I'm standing here with Dale Wen from the International Forum on Globalisation. Uh, Dale, we've been hearing a little bit about um, the talks so far this week and also about um, uh, perceptions of, of the, uh, the roles of China and, and the USA. So I'm hoping that to uh, get your impressions uh, on this. My first question is, um, what, what progress have we seen here in Tianjin? Uh, I think there are some progress, but they are rather slowly, as uh, Mina Roman from Third World Network has explained. It's just there's really a lot of differences between the developed countries and developing countries, and uh, partly because the developed countries, especially the U.S., don't want to make their fair share of contribution to to address climate change, so they are really tr trying very hard to shift attention to developing countries to play the blame game, and I think part of the reason the talks are moving rather slowly. And, and you mentioned there that the, the USA has been trying to shift the attention onto China and onto other developing countries, and China has come, into a lot of, uh, lot in, come in for a lot of criticism uh, here. Um, why do you think why do you think China is uh, um, in this position? Does it does it deserve the criticism that it's been receiving? Um, I think uh, no, China doesn't deserve the criticism it, because uh, as shown in the open letter as well as the table comp compiled by some scholars, which you probably got a copy, and showing the compare the relative responsibility to climate change as well as the current actions. Of, to address climate change, as the data clear, clearly shows that China, as a developing country, is already doing more than the United States. And we've, this is a message that we've heard a lot this week. China is, is taking a lot of action. Why do you think um, this isn't being heard by the public? Why, why are the media not picking up on this? Uh, I don't know. That's a very good question. I have maybe I some have some guesses. It's just uh, the media bias, or the, maybe the media just. Uh, uh, just like to have somebody else to blame, <laughs> <laughs> especially the Western media. It's, it's, it's easier to blame China than blame the US, of course, is it? Uh -huh. And do you think that the, um, the American strategy with the media is more successful than the Chinese strategy? Is, is there a difference in approach? Uh, yes, definitely. I think definitely. I think when you look at the two countries, it's actually the leadership is very different. Because when you look at China's leadership, it's most of them have the science and technology background. I think that's one reason actually the Chinese leadership really take climate change much more seriously, not only on the rhetoric level at the Obama administration, but they are really doing it. But as engineers, they are just not very good with the media <laughs> in comparison, <laughs> I have to say. And on the other hand, I feel like uh, American leadership Probably take President Obama as an example with his lawyer background. He's very good with words. They are very good with the media, but they are not necessarily doing the concrete things we need to do to address climate change. And so my, my last question is, what needs to happen in, in these last two days to move things forward? What, what, how do we achieve progress here? Uh, I think, let's recall that in Bali, the U.S. was asked either to lead or to get out of the way. And to give it fair credit to the Bush administration, I think they moved out of the way. By signing the Bali Action Plan, which the US actually signed, which, which allowed the rest of the world to move forward, while the 1B1 of the Bali Action Plan also kind of makes the room for US to move forward later in a par comparable way. But I think we are almost back that to that stage, so we are asking the US either to lead or to move out of the way. <laughs> okay, Dale, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.